Our active soldiers and veterans also feeling the devastating effects of our nation's fentanyl epidemic. The National Library of Medicine says between 2010 and 2019, there was a 53% increase in drug overdose deaths among veterans. Data shows opioid prescriptions among veterans quadrupled from 2001 to 2009, fentanyl 100 times stronger than morphine. And now the opioid epidemic is also creeping into the ranks of our active duty military. 330 service members died of drug overdoses between 2016 and 2021. The problem's so bad, the Pentagon is now required to track overdoses within the ranks. We are bringing in the former director of the DEA Special Operations Division, Derek Maltz. Uh, Derek, I appreciate you coming back on the show to talk about this. And let's start with the extraordinary statistic here. The DEA saying that 7 in 10 seized pills have lethal doses of fentanyl. 7 in 10. Derek, you are pointing the finger at China. Tell me why. Well, the Chinese Communist Party implemented a strategic plan about 15 years ago to use synthetic drugs and destabilize America. Unfortunately, now, our future generation is getting killed off at historic levels. We've never seen anything like it in the history of our country. There's never been a terrorist organization ever to kill this many Americans. We have younger and younger children that are dying, but our military is now dying at record levels. We have men and women in the military who have signed up to defend our country. Mental illness is on the rise, depression, anxiety. They're turning to medication, they're turning to pills, they're turning to other illicit drugs for help. But unfortunately, that drug supply is tainted with deadly fentanyl. And our government is not even really talking about this, except during this selection season, they want the public to think they're doing something about it. But unfortunately, moms and dads around the country are waking up to the horror of seeing their loved ones dead in the house. And Derek, I know that you're often contacted directly by family members of service members who died from fentanyl poisoning. Can you share one of those recent stories with us? Yeah, it's heartbreaking. So long story short, 24-year-old Army soldier Holly, and she joined uh, to help her kids. She had two beautiful young daughters. Uh, she joined the military to defend our country. Unfortunately, she had a knee injury in boot camp. She wanted to uh, get some help, and, and apparently there was delays, delays. I don't know every detail, but what I do know is that, unfortunately, she turned to a, a pill that she got on the street, and the pill obviously contained fentanyl, and she died. Now, her mother is taking care of the kid, the one daughter, who's six years old, Amelia, and it's a horror show. I mean, this is what's happening. I mean, DEA just put out a statistic that over a 10-year period, 2001 to 2011, there were 321,000 kids that lost their parents to fentanyl and drug, well, drugs specifically. But I, I know the vast majority were from fentanyl. That's because it's poison. These are not overdoses. They're poisonings of our citizens. So, yeah, it's a very disturbing story. But I talk to families every day. Just like the past two weeks, I had two moms I was talking to that lost two kids two kids each in a family. Mm -hmm. So it's getting worse. Uh, the stories are heartbreaking, and we just need a lot more aggressive action. We must shut down the poisonous production labs in Mexico, and we can't rely on the corrupt Mexican government to save our families and save our you know, our future generation. It's very sad. Derek, it's incredibly sad. And we see the increased call for action at the border when it comes to fentanyl. For example, Nancy Liu just talking about California doubling the National uh, Guard troops at its border with Mexico. What action, though, needs to be taken with the role that you've described China is playing in all of this? What can be done there? So just so you know, the House China Select Committee did, it, did an active investigation, and they have evidence that basically the CCP is incentivizing the exports of fentanyl analogs and fentanyl precursor chemicals. They want to kill Americans. That's part of their strategic plan. So we have to get a little tougher on China. I know it's a very complicated issue. I mean, the FBI director has been saying it for months now. China's our biggest national security threat. But yet, at the border, we're letting in about 4,000 illegal Chinese nationals. Most of them are military-aged men that are coming into this country for what purpose and why are we letting them in? So 
it's very difficult, it's challenging, but inaction is just making it worse over time. And so we have a lot of national security threats that are in our country, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm very, I'm very scared for the country, and I sure hope we can get some action. But China is a very complex uh, threat. It's multiple threats. It's not just from the drugs and the precursors. They're in our electrical grids. They're in our, you know, our education system, our financial systems. And they could shut us down any day just because of the hacking that they do. So it's very, very alarming. But we need action. We don't need political, you know, talking points. Right, and, and multi-pronged action. And multi-pronged action from what you're describing.